and we just had one of the craziest. It was it was nuts. Two game series. Like if we imagine. were chipmunks, we'd be very very happy. Yeah, I'm still very very happy because now we also get to cast Secret versus IG, which mm -hmm. should be a really good matchup. Secret actually coming out of a game against Fnatic. Where they lost one game and won one yeah. game. They actually got 1-1 one, one in this. They only get one point for their first round, putting them in a very, very rough position in a group which is yeah. already being flagged as one of the hardest out there. Exactly, because some group stages are, if you win one game, there's one point. If you win two games, that's two points. Not the case in this group stage. Correct. You won a 2-0. It's very important. So any 1-1 one, one series is going to put you at a deficit in your in your mm -hmm. points, so to say. And of course, it's up, better than getting 2 -0. Up against a team like Fnatic, like, like Secret would have come in and said, okay, up against Fnatic and up against MVP. We need to 2-0 these games. These series are very, very important because that's where we're going to be able to get those bonus points and really make sure we secure the top four position because right now, Complexity did that against MVP Phoenix. They went 2-0. So they're sitting up there with LGD three points apiece at the top. It's going to be a tightly contested group over the next couple of days. Yeah. But let's actually talk about IG because for me, I'm a huge IG fan. Because yeah. I, I love the way Ferrari plays. He's really stepped up his game of late. So I want to be watching him very, very closely to see how this mid lane battle turns out. Yeah, he's a phenomenal player in every regard. And this entire team just consists of amazing people. Like Chon, one of the most animated players that you can imagine. When you meet him, you can feel his energy just, you know, in an aura around him. So happy. So I really, really love the players in IG. They're cool. And uh, seeing them go up against Secret is going to be amazing. Yeah. So uh, Tusk, again, getting the respect here, being banned out in the first phase, as well as Shadow Fiend. We knew he was going to be a high tier pick at yep. STI. He's been very, very Ten relevant seconds. this patch. Mm -hmm. It's also one of those heroes which Ferrari just like excels on. So is the Queen of Pain. Yes. It's also ironic that the Queen of Pain is being picked up here by Secret after what Mushi just did to them with exactly the same hero. Yeah, exactly. Mushi, like if you just straight out say Queen of Pain, Mushi is actually the first one that I think of because he plays such a strong Queen of Pain overall. Of course, there are some clips of him missing ulti or whatever, but he has played tons of Queen games. And in this game, we're going to see IG going into Gyro, Bloodseeker. So if there is a strategy to counter Bloodseeker, Secret is probably the go-to team to look to. Can you can you show me how you want to shut down an early reveal on Gyrocopter? Well, because they just lost to it. That they did. They actually lost to a Queen of Pain and Bloodseeker with a dying Gyro. So the double the double combo similar. is already there. And then the Bane on top of all of this. So yeah. One, However, I well, we, we do not know. At least we were casting another game. So yes, we were looking at the picks and at what stage they were drafted. I don't believe we can see here uh, if it was an early pick because this is very early and they are fully Ten aware seconds. of the Bloodseeker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dazzle is a good counter. That's a list because That's a because seconds. he can bring the heal to your entire team. So he can actually bring you up in HP so that you don't suffer from these fights where you take a skirmish and then you have like, maybe you killed one guy, three of your guys are really low HP and then Bloodseeker comes in and makes short work of you. The only downside is he can also keep someone on zero life. Yeah. Or one life. That's true. He might, but... <laughs> and then that, Bloodseeker that's better. to train. <laughs> yeah. That's better than them dying still. That's... That, I'll take that. Five so, remaining. we'll see what they do. They ban out the Bane here and Razor also gets banned out by the side of IG. So we keep going here. This has to be a little bit, it's a little bit nerving though when you go into a game after just losing to Gyrocopter and Bloodseeker and next game you see Gyrocopter and Bloodseeker again. Obviously not the full same lineup, mm -hmm. but Ten still it's what you just lost to and it does nerve you a little bit. We're also going to assume too that like, it's going to run Five the same way. Remaining. Like it was a, a safe lane and an off lane. Uh, for the Gyro and the Bloodseeker. Yeah. So we're still missing a mid solo for IG and their two supports. So we don't know who they're playing up against in the mid. Uh, and in fact, IG already signed a ban that Razor might be linking, like, leaning us towards the point of, like, what are they getting there? I think they're just, no, nah, they're just trying to find something that's very good at laning against the Bloodseeker. They're removing annoying heroes for him as he wants to go to the offlane, most likely. That's where you typically run him. Mm -hmm. Um,. Would you also look towards something like Zeus? Uh, and I'm thinking Zeus for IG here. There could be a ban on Zeus from Secret. I think it's a very respectable ban here. It might be what they're debating hence the taking yes, so long. Yes, because they're thinking a long time about this. And other heroes that come to mind... Uh, I'm not sure. Just in general, AoE damage heroes are good to remove here. And disables. But Zeus is probably something you have to respect. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, however, I, I can't recall having seen Ferrari play Zeus in a very long time, but... They, they hey, could also go for like, like the, the team fight control combo. You go for something more like a disruptor pickup uh, to combine up with a gyrocopter. You could also... Okay, they're gonna take out the Viper. That's, that's secret looking at the Razor pickup thinking that's what, what IG are considering at the moment. Yeah, I think both that and the fact that they have Queen of Pain themselves because you can't really Shadow Strike a Viper, yep. he's gonna endlessly return his Corrosive skin onto you when you Shadow Strike him. So that's a good reaction as well. And uh, as you were pointing out, it has multiple facets to it. Hmm. Um, of course, IG have their, their next ban out here. Both teams taking a little bit more time to just, you know, think about this draft. Yeah. Well, we saw faster drafts in the previous yeah, that we did, but it was a little bit more straightforward. Yeah, in our in our last it games, because it was like both teams kind of knew exactly what they wanted to have. But now we've we've gotten into like the crutch of the draft, where it's like we're not a hundred percent hundred percent certain what bad. everyone is going to be doing, and like we still want to have like advantage in our lanes as well. So how do we make this combo work? Yeah. That was an extremely good ban, by the way, branding out the Brood when Dazzle is already picked up. I think it's recognizing a weakness that you have there, because no matter if Gyrocopter is pretty good against Brood and, you know, Bloodseeker to an extent can be decent against her, uh, just the Dazzle heal bump onto the Spiderlings makes her able to take over a lane, crush it, and take the tower so quickly. So you don't want to fight up against that. Just removing it in a second phase is good. Um, well, IG. You're taking out the Brood, so you buy a little bit of space for the Bloodseeker. What do you now try and combo? You don't have the Dazzle to work with, so you can't just have like him babysitting the Bloodseeker on the offlane. Do you try and go for something else that sits with the Bloodseeker? The Wisp is still available inside the pool as well. It is. Or do you just say, you know what, BS to the best you can on the offlane. There we go. Where's our Zeus for the mid? Yeah. Um, and then... Like get it yourself into the jungle, get yourself into economy. I know I keep I keep like flagging this one, even though like jungle is not really the current meta. Mm. Um, but yeah, looking in at, a like, way it is. It's just having something like like Enchantress in the pool. You you wanna you wanna try and go for something that fits the comfort line of IG. Yeah, definitely. Undying <laughs> sneaks his way all the way into a sixth pick by a team secret here. And he will be picked up. So strong laner being uh, secured there, but the uh, Zeus and Bloodseeker combo for IG is also very potent. Now though, they need to add up some supports, unless they want to run a Zeus support, which is fully doable. Mm -hmm. But mid Zeus would be more standard. Yep. Um, so I'm thinking maybe Winter Wyvern here. Witch Doctor is possible to take as well. Is oh, decent. Witch Doctor is always good. Yeah, he's a very nice hero. He has many. Many different strengths. Seconds. His push is it's, fine, his high ground defense is it's fine. It's hard to go wrong with him, especially when you have like like dual hitting combos, because then the paralyzing cask is the perfect control against it. Yeah, it can be very nice. You just want some disables against the queen right now, is what I'm looking at for IG. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have disables for her, you like 100% need the Bloodseeker to go in and rupture her, which very often he will be able to do, but it's not guaranteed that you always see the Queen first in a fight, and maybe she gets in uh, later on when people have actually exposed themselves. Should we also be looking at something else to deal with the Undying Tombstone? Yeah, right now they have Gyrocopter, which is good. I don't think they can afford picking real like Tombstone counters more than that. It's like Blue Bloodseeker and Gyro will have to try and take care of it. So ranged, Rubik's fine. ranged support heroes are in general pretty fine. You know what I would love to see from IG? What? An ogre. That's last pick. Just ogre magi. Like, it would honestly synchronize very nicely in their lineup. The bloodlust would be really good for them. And they have more disable than that way. And a tanky support to combine with Rubik. They, they could do that, but at the same time, they, it looks good. But on paper, you might also think about something more like a Lena uh, pickup. So you could that burst damage against the Queen of Pain and a combo hero with a Rubik. Yeah, that, that's remaining. definitely possible. Like Ogre is not really trending hard. It's just yeah. they would synchronize very nicely into this uh, this matchup time. here. Well, if they pick it, you could be you can be seen as a god. I'll I'll be happy then. If not, then uh, you are a mere mortal. Then I'm a mere mortal, confirmed. So Team Secret, <clears throat> see if they want to go for uh, the Wyvern. Maybe it's possible. Templar Possible, assassin. but oh, nice! Another TA. Yeah, hundred percent win. Still, maybe. <laughs> I haven't seen all the games she today. One so. game. <laughs> she played three games. Oh, she played three games. Three uh, games in the wild cards. I take it back. I saw all of them. <laughs> I got my. <laughs> I'm tracking it, dude. Uh, I have not watched today's game, so there might have been more TAs, but Ten very nice to add up me. this. And S4 plays a really good TA. Played against it several times. Five so you you push the TA into the mid. Does this now mean that Queen of Pain? 
Heads to the off lane. I think it's safe lane. Are you actually I think Queen safe will, lane for Arteezy? I think uh, Queen will bully the Bloodseeker on safe lane, and then you have Undying along with possibly the last pick, and just have Queen dazzle top, or the other way around, have an Undying dazzle lane. Because right now, I think you want to have Queen against the Bloodseeker, not against the Gyrocopter. Clock, gonna Jeez. be banned out. Yeah, so they actually Very think, good off laner. IG, I think of the same thing as you. I don't know, it's like, when was the last time we really saw Arteezy play Queen of Pain? Dude, everyone like, loves to play Queen of Pain. It doesn't matter. Like, mm. he's been a mid player forever. He knows, he knows his way around Queen. I can understand that. Mm. It's, it's just like fitting into the normal carries up against someone like a Gyro. It looks like Team Secret just like Five putting themselves into a remain. corner as far as how their laning phase can really come out. Like, either you get momentum, Reserve or you lose. Time. Yeah. Well, that's that's the whole point of uh, putting a safe lane queen, though, is that you can get that momentum. You get the item progression early Ten on queen, seconds, and really? when you have all the economy on queen, it's very easy to have a big impact. So we'll see if they go for that. In but uh, they're gonna ban out AA. Oh, that's a good ban, actually. Zeus, AA, and Bloodseeker could have been terrifying. A good spot there by uh, S4 and, and mm -hmm. Puppy, as the two of them are actually talking a lot. Yep. And there's your Wyvern. So that's the f last pick up here for Invictus Gaming. Mm. The magical damage will still connect, but that physical might it's, be a little bit more difficult. It's a great hero against TA. It's amazing against TA. Partly just because of the, the ulti and being able to stop her, or just ulting someone close to TA. God, they will die so <laughs> fast. But Cold Embracing is, is amazing against her. So the combo is there for IG. That means we will be seeing a Zeus core in this game with a Wyvern Rubik support. And Team Secret know what they're up against, and now they've got to decide just how heavily they want to fight Five it. You've got a Queen of Pain on the safe lane, which means you can almost leave her alone in a way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then run Undying Dazzle plus one on the offline TA in the mid. And Bounty Hunter. Oh, that's a good freedom pick. Like, they have, they have so much freedom to move anyway, so they can start out by having two top, and then Bounty Hunter will move around. But is this Bounty core or something? Support. No, I believe it's a support. I believe it's so, uh, so undying. Un undying becomes yeah. like, played by Zai as a core. That's why I believe at least. It looks like it could be right. We're, we're going to find out anyway. As uh, Team Secret, they wrap it up with one of the most popular heroes to be oh. banned in the early stages of the wild card. I fuck. I forgot to mention this as well, by the way, but uh, mm. Zeus actually one of the worst heroes against uh, TA on laning phase, because TA is one of few heroes. I should put it the other way around. TA is one of the best heroes against Zeus in the laning phase, because yep. you can deny against his arc lightning. You do have enough damage to do that, which is very, Ten very seconds. rare for mid heroes. Mm. The only downside is Zeus burns two refraction charges per nuke he throws Five up yep. with his Remain. third skill. I'm also worried about bounty hunter up against Zeus. Yeah. Running Around in like lightning bolt anybody. That's that's not going to be an easy world to live in, uh, and it will in fact be Zai on the Undying. So Team Secret going to get themselves together Prepare as we will now battle. head in and welcome in the mainstream viewers who have now joined us from the live streams. So those those wonderful people tuning in through Dota TV. You've been with us from the very very get go. We're here for game number one of round two of the group stages. IG versus Team Secret, where Secret are looking to post their first 2-0 victory after their 1-1 draw to Fnatic, and IG. It's their first game to kick off the tournament. Yeah, truly amazing. And I mean, one off, like, just really off the chain feeling about this TI is the fact that we already breached 3 million viewers concurrent <laughs> in the like first day of TI, really. We had wild cards yesterday, but. It's just so hard to grasp. Love your Dota, man. Love your Dota. So what we get from IG is a little bit different here. We have Ferrari on the Bloodseeker. So this is not being played by Luo. In fact, uh, Luo is going to be put into the Zeus role. Yeah. Yeah, Luo has that boots first Zeus running around. He does have a sentry as well with him. I think he could put that sentry to someone else since he, he will have the Thunderbolt anyway, but maybe he just wants to uh, have it available if he runs into Pantheon so he can I, chase him down. I think are really looking for the first blood. Yeah, they are. s is not going to give it to him. Oh, like, care sure. if the bounty rune doesn't make any sense. They realize on the bottom no one's down here. Uh, Zai is watching the him. Now they do see S4. So first room will go the way of Ferrari. And this will turn us in to now a Zeus safe lane. Uh, yep. We'll have a middle lane blood seeker with support Chuan at the start, at least for the block, and then a dual off lane of burning as the gyro and faith is the group. I'm liking it this combo. Yeah, IG are mixing up a lot, and uh, it's a really strong combo. 
you can pull up and just pull them back into the uh, rocket barrage. Of course, hurts a lot. And uh, we're going to see what Secret do with their bounty hunter, because he can't really find that much on bottom, I believe, against the Zeus with just a nine down there. <laughs> he does have the Orb of Venom, though. But I like how he drops a sentry ward at the very start, too. So he'll see Koro now on the bot lane and understand he's got to keep his distance. Yeah. He could, he could even attack him and just force him away and say, hey, I, I see what you're doing. Like, get rid of this bounty hunter. Because he's got to pester him as much as he can. Okay, so if you're in RTZ shoes right now, you're going one-on-one -on -one with the Bloodseeker, with Wyvern harassing you every now and then. What do you do to stop this? I mean, you just gotta, you just gotta side blade, dude. That's the only thing. You have to pull the creeps from the Bloodseeker into yourself, and then side blade onto the Bloodseeker. That's how you need to lane. Because if you just try to last it against him, it's very difficult, and he won't be scared of you attacking him because you're attacking the creeps. Radiant but if you pull the creeps back, you get an angle. Attack. That's how you actually can lane against it. Oh, Lure, this is just not his day. Koro is getting really up in his face, and with that orb of venom, he does some serious work against the Zeus. Good thing he, he cancels his clarity. Yeah. Good thing he has his boots available at least, so he can do something there, but uh, getting really, really pestered out here. And this tower is going to go down fast. Like, Puppy is here with the heal on bottom lane. They're going to push this. Yeah, just creep skip it out. This is also what I think uh, Lua was really scared of, and the reason why he backed up from the tower, because he realized it wasn't safe just to sit back behind the tower. It could be uh, like a tombstone leveled up, so I could throw that down, and then the, the push would just be so easy to kill him. Claim first blood, and then momentum will then shoot. Uh, instead, though, they bring Lua with a TP, Chuan harassing his eye, and there's that tombstone drop. So Zai has the advantage at the moment. Lua is trying to get rid of the tombstone, but Puppy harassing him down. Chuan, oh, he's trying to do the work. They're bringing him more help with a burst heal, actually hitting into Chuan. And now Luo, he might have a bolt of valuable faith, trying to take away a little bit of the damage, but they're chasing Luo into the tree line. Kuro right Run. behind him. He's just having to juke it around. And this movement, the boots, is doing the work until he gets body blocked by faith. But Kuro picked up, thrown back into the tree line. He's still right on top of Luo. The lightning bolt down. Kuro is dropping. He needs to get away oh, from the tower, dead. but he cannot do so in time. IG get the counter kills out. Yeah, they get the counter kills, but that was a lot of TPs as well, and expensive ones this early on in the game. But should flag the fact that we just saw a Bloodseeker kill off a Templar Assassin in mid. You have to remember, when wow. the rest of Seeker is dropping low, he gets buffed up, yeah. he brought down Arteezy. That is true. When you start fighting, especially running around on low HP for that long, that makes the Bloodseeker really, really strong, so hard to lane against on the mid lane. And uh, he's playing really well. He is winning against the TA pretty hard. Yep. He's 14 and 7 right now. At this point, he's just wishing the puppy would heal up a little bit quicker. <laughs> yeah. And top lane, though, Queen of Pain, after the Rubik TP'd away from top, he's actually going to be taking over a little bit more with the Queen again. But Gyro did get a nice farming start, at least. Mm -hmm. So up to 12 and 7. And Ferrari's expecting more attacks. He's gone three points up in the first. Yeah. Uh, I think that's reasonable in an, in an aggressive game like this. Yep. Definitely a good start. Now, I suppose what what really is like Blood Rage or the Blood Right going to do up against a Templar Assassin in the laning phase? Yeah, not that much. It doesn't really do anything. Top lane, S4, they're having a crack on him on the top lane. Koro trying to stay right in his tail. You don't have another blink available and not enough damage to kill the Gyro. Yeah, that's very difficult. Very difficult to bring him down early as he has so much so much armor really on the hero and just able to run away with the Basilius as well. And uh, mid lane, I like to see what Arteezy is doing. This is something I've been doing for for years. It's just skilling up two points in side blades. It makes it so much easier to use the side blades because one point is just not enough. And Zai is committing. He drops the tune, so he's actually uh, taking he up a lot of damage though. from this. Uh, trying to keep the undead minions up so it takes attack, the attack from the tower. No soul rip available, so the tombstone's just gonna drop. Poppy attempting to deny it, in fact. Oh, they're going for a tower deny. Are they gonna dive in here? But the Arctic. The Arctic Burn being used. So he secured a deny. Very nice. I didn't think they would be able to actually recover that lane and secure a deny down there. But with that big fight they took, they actually did. They are going to start to lose a little bit of map control because of this. With the tier 1 tower dropping, IG is going to... Oh, I missed TP by uh, Arteezy. He wanted to magic one and he accidentally TP'd to mid lane, which he was already on. Oops. So no TP and he wasted a lot of mana there. Well, that just means that he can't react now. Maybe IG will capitalize. I think S4 is getting in a position where he wants to attack on the top, but the Sentry Ward's been really nicely placed by IG, ready for that Bounty Hunter. Yep. So they know when he arrived on the top lane just to back it up. And another Sentry Ward placed in the mid lane, in case uh, Kuro then tries to move to this region. And in fact, they see him with the Observer Ward, always pinging his position. Yeah, he's trying to run around everywhere, this Bounty Hunter, just trying to find what, whatever he can. 
but I think he crucially needs level 4, because that's when you have 2 points into the Shuri Toss, which is so much damage, 225 at a level 2 nuke. Uh, normally what you see on a level 3 nuke on most AoE spells. Mm -hmm. Oh mid, they're gonna try with the Rupture. No, they don't do it. Uh, I, th I think they're a little concerned because they uh, they yeah. scouted out the fact that Poppy's sitting right behind yeah, them. They, they've seen him, yeah. yeah. So they, they know it's not a guaranteed kill. You get the Rupture and then you just under Shallow Grave walk back behind the tower. Yeah. You'll still be insanely low and Bloodseek will see you the entire way. Yeah, level 1 Rupture you can pretty much run from. Mm -hmm. Level 2 Rupture, that's when you can't run anymore because it doubles the damage output from it. Yeah. So, uh... I'd be a little concerned though once Zeus hits level 6. Yeah, getting, the... getting away with Shallow Grave is not going to be as easy. Yeah, and he's getting plenty of experience now as well in bottom lane. Look at all that push into a tier 2 tower. That's an easy level 5. Yeah, he's going to reach, reach plenty of experience and levels here. 900 gold as well, so despite his early game being tough, he's still 1-0-0. He never died, and he did his job. Yeah, now he can just buy, well, whatever he wants. It can easily be Arcane Boots, which might be a nicer way to go. Yeah, Bloodseeker going for the Midas. Very standard build on uh, Bloodseeker. Try and propel your farm even more, or particularly your levels, as level 16 is such a big thing for him. And so, top lane, we kind of... Evic not S4. You're talking about momentum on S4. Is this one of these games where you want to just see agonims? You want to see the ability to have a team fight as we have seen previously through most of the wildcard matches? Or is this one of these awkward games? Is this one of the ones where you like you jump in, you try and nuke down the Zeus, uh, even though he might actually go Yule? So I think this is, uh, this is the orchid game, or... Actually, you will be solo HP. Nah, I think Aghanims is better still. Like, Orchid would be good for them, but however, the Orchid targets are probably gonna be hard to see. Like, Winter Wyvern being the best one, he will stand in Fog of War. Sometimes Rubik or Zeus will also be hard to reach. You don't really want to silence a Bloodseeker. It doesn't do much. Same with Gyrocopter. Yep. Especially if they get their BKBs. So, we'll see. I probably think he goes Aghanims after his power treads. Kuro's having it wandered down. Oh, They're gonna try to crack at Luo. His eyes making him big move. There goes your tombstone. Decay. Kuro's still got a Shuri toss up his sleeve, and that's gonna be the death Not of Not even Luo. needed. Yeah, so he preserves his mana there very nice. Not wasting the 120 and able to get a good kill there. And very close to level 4 now. He's gonna run up into jungle. Ferrari's actually gonna get himself. This almost looks like a 9 minute Midas uh, if he doesn't. Yeah, which is very fast from a mid lane. Going, considering the fact that you're going for power treads first and four man shield, quelling blades, and you know, still getting a nine minute Midas or so is extremely fast. Observers and sentries being dropped on the bottom room point. Uh, looks like Zai has had enough of pushing out the bottom lane while the top lane. There's four is adding some chip damage into that tier one tower. The man on the defense duty is burning. Yeah. I'm looking over to the side of um, Gyrocopter right now, because he's been playing the off lane. he has 32 CS, it's not too impressive, but look what they have done for him. They have been preparing the jungle, there are stacks on the big camp, so he can recover once again, despite the fact that he was not having a very safe lane, he has a mechanic to make a comeback. Surprisingly enough, I thought Lua was going to go for a bigger item, but he just went for Soul Ring after his death. Uh, Tombstone, that's a double decay over on Faith. Kuro trying to slow him down, and with a Shuri Toss, he's going to be able to get it. The blood right, maybe Kuro, not so healthy, and Dying will find the kill. Yeah. Bloodseeker finding the one back on Bounty Hunter almost directly after, however, and that's his Midas. Yeah, they trade one for one, but the important part for Kuroki is that he actually died second, so he got experience for the death of Rubik, because that can be one of the things that set you back when you play Bounty Hunter or when you draft a Bounty Hunter, rather. If he doesn't get level 6 quick enough, he can't really play his hero, because you want to run around, track, and just make sure that the enemy cannot group up and smoke gang, stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So, super crucial for him to die second instead of first. Oh, it's gonna be a Midas uh, TA? No, it's just power trip. I was wondering. Uh, Arteezy used to run Midas TA way, way, like, all the time back in the days, but it's not, it's not good anymore. <laughs> it might be a nice catch-up ability, but... No, no, it's just terrible. <laughs> and uh, we see Bounty Hunter sneaking down into enemy jungle here, Midas being used by Bloodseeker. Uh, Kuroki, of course. There's no shared experience when you use a Midas, so uh, didn't get anything from that. Poor man. Elsie's just sneaking around here trying to leech. It's, it's, it's a leech and it's also trying to be an intimidation factor if, if they can do it onto uh, Chuan, who's trying to find his level 6 on this bottom lane against the Undying. A bit of a dangerous lane to be in, but Zyda seems that little bit of extra protection as well. 200 gold Radiant's away from having the full mech. And then Seeker's teamfights can be nice, uh, even to a point where we have to remember they are Diacide with a Templar Assassin. 
So they could try and take Roshan and still be ready to take a team fight against IG. I mean, he's got to take uh, Ancients now. So they're going to go for that first. He has three points into the side blades. Never really tried for going that, but it makes it very easy to kill off these Ancients as you just pull them out on the line. So with this, this is so much gold going his way. He could go into the early blink, which we have seen previously in the tournament. Is it worth going Deso in this game, however? Or, do you, or Deso, do you feel like you need more life? I think going Deso first before blink is definitely justifiable. But especially if you get like an Aegis behind it, because then you yeah, get like the double yeah, yeah. negative exactly. armor. It's also the fact that when you go Deso first, you can you can go and take the Aegis easier, whereas if you go blink dagger, you delay that kind of power. Top tier one tower, the Bloodseeker's gonna come to defend it. Deny Catapult's brought it within deny range, and uh, it's up to S4 if he really wants to try and have a crack at this. It's a 44. <laughs> it's two hits. And with a new creep wave coming in, there's one. So it's the oh. bottom right. S4 gets it and blinks away to safety. Wow. I also thought he had that deny on uh, Ferrari, but he actually missed it and S4 claims it. That's a very big deal as well, getting a last hit on the tower as opposed to it being denied. Uh, TT spent his money. It's a Mithril Hammer. Yep. Uh, the mech is also now fully completed. At the same time, I'm also seeing Puppy walking around with a chainmail. So we're, uh, we're starting up the medallion, medallion. For, uh, for Dazzle. They definitely have a game plan, like the, everything is prepared in detail that it's gonna play out like this, we're gonna get the Ancients, farm that, you're gonna make an early Desolator, and then we go Roshan. Like, they have a script that they're following, just the same as the Director's team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they know what they're up to. Right now, like, IG's team is looking fantastic, where they can chase down Zai, they need the extra damage, Lightning Bolt's gonna do it, and that gives them the vision for the Rupture. Zai, the straight TP out, oh, but you've yeah. got Chuan right behind him. And uh, provide the, the cold embrace, which will cancel the TP. Very but he's, nice. he still bought the mech before death. The winter's cursed. Please. The winter's cursed. Cold embrace is a friendly spell. It would never kill you. Except for when, like, someone does that and it just sets up for the enemy AoE spells, and you're like, yeah, thank you. Yes, correct. Thank you so much. They're actually stealing the enemy ancients now, and they were quite well prepared. There was three stacks of ancients, and Arteezy is now going there and taking it from the gyrocopter. Oh, this is a big blow. Even the Shadow Wave coming in and healing as it does deal damage to uh, Ancients. That was a big steal. That also gives Bounty level 6, so you got track oh, on the field. God. And, and they're gonna find Chuan. Okay, he, um, he's probably safe. It's worth a track. The TA throws a trap down as well, so IG now will not want to move anywhere near that. Yeah. But they have to understand their Ancients are gone. They have good heroes for Vision, honestly. Both teams. I mean, there's the Zeus ulti, there's the Bloodseeker. And on the side of Seeker, of course, track and TA traps. Both teams know that, you know, seeing your opponent is, is half the battle, knowing where they are. Well, tier 1 tower, now it's time to attack it. It's the last tier 1 tower remaining for IG. Seeker have just systematically taken out these front buildings of IG. They have, and they don't have any any real reason to stop. The tombstone is down. Level 4 tombstone. Yes, yeah, the minions which are just pushing Luo back. They've tracked him up too. It's like a perfect vision. Denial of the tower did come out from burning. And they're not looking to fight this. Yeah. They will not come under the tombstone, and they'll be quite happy to fight if Seeker come to their tier 2, though. That was very brave and brave and nicely done by Burning to time that deny and going up. That's enough. Now just spread out again. <laughs> they need to farm. If, if Arteezy takes... The, yeah, there's actually another stack inside the Dire yeah. Jungle. When he takes this, he, he, has the he, he has the full Desolator. Yeah, it's gonna be a 14 minute tour. Actually, before 14 minute Desolator. That's really quick. And with an Aegis, the model then behind you. Yep. This like, is really scary for IG. Like, can, they may have a wonderful combo, but he's getting big. Yeah. Does he have the medallion as well prepared? He almost has it. So, he is gonna buy it up uh, now, I believe, yeah. He is 100 and 115 gold away. He'll get that from the top lane, puppy. Yep. And then it's Roche time. Look where IG's moving. They're trying to predict it. Like, there's an Invis room, but funny enough, you attract Ferrari, so that's not gonna help you at all. In fact, they, uh, Sentry Ward out. The Observer, but they're, they're actually trapped on both sides. Like, Zai and S4 are on the radiant side of the jungle. They throw the Tombstone down, oh, start with a K into the ulti, and Faith actually stealing the game. That's not gonna help with the Sonic Wave from S4. Perfect positioning. They're getting track kills. Ferrari will try and TP out of here. Will he be in time? He gets back to base, and he will survive. Just barely. But you lost three heroes for IG. Up to Secret, just pick up the death later. Now taking Roshan. I mean, that was just Secret walking in with what? Basically just Queen and Undying, like yep. the two of them made short work of four heroes pretty much, as long as he could just TP it out. I know there was like the track played a big part in it and the Dazzle was there, but still, that was just the Tombstone and the Queen playing perfectly. Wow, and that secures their early 
early ages to have more stacks. This is starting to look like an old Dreamhack meta, like <laughs> no, way back in No Tide Hunter no, kind yeah, of days. The Sven, the yeah, Sven play. The good old Wisp Sven meta where stacks on Ancients was everything. I'm very happy for it not to be the case, but this is different though. Like that meta was, okay, it we, was very we're, mindless. We're, we're not gonna fight, it's just stack, 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 farm, 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 farm. Where in this case, it's a we push, we move, we farm as we go. It's not a we prepare them, this is our life. It's a, uh, you know what, we're in the neighborhood and we just capitalize on the situation. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is starting to look really grim for IG because they're not taking control over this game. The four and six kills, which is not very much, but the fact is stolen ancients and just the way that Secret are outmaneuvering them with the help of the track. Uh, it's looking tough for IG. It is. They need to get some, some footing somewhere. Yeah, but they can't do too much when you go uh, Midas on Bloodseeker, like, there's, you need to wait for the first item. There's smoke moving. Yeah. They're actually smoke moving to try and, are they trying to catch, like, Secret of the Ancients? They were, they were hoping that, you know... Oh, they're, they're warding the Ancients. They're moving in force and warding up the Ancients to try and stop that kind of farm. I hate to tell them, though, but that's not gonna stop the Secret. Well, it's, it's at least something, because the Ancients have been used a you know, very, very frequently, especially considering the fact that Secret does not have a Helmet Dominator. They've just been stacking with their supports relentlessly, all the time. Every time they got a chance with Puppy, he has been stacking something. And once again, uh, they're gonna farm up the Ancients, but this is gonna be no respawn after it. Man, I'm trying to look at the timings for IG here and what they can do. They still are far away from any real item on Zeus. Their Gyrocopter, I mean, he's farming up, but he's, he's not farmed up. He just has drums and Aquila. And Bloodseeker as well. I mean, he's working on PKB, I suppose. But it's not really gonna protect him as well. Luo's in trouble. Luo's in a lot of trouble. Templar Assassin wants to run it. They use the weave to get vision, and they actually have no stunts. He will buy the Blink Dagger now. That's uh, 17 minutes. Death on Blink. That's, that's like the dream game. Just free farming. It's 128 CS, 17 minutes. And that's actually with him being solo killed on the lane. Talk about a recovery, because the blood score is manhandling him. I love how Zai is just trying to force issues. Yeah, Zai is just be... like, fight me! Sean put himself under, and then thought he had the opening out. TZ bottom lane, there's your jump on Luo, the first strike. He's gonna get picked up by Faith, throw him back as Meld will be stolen. Like, he's puppy off the front lines too. Mm. But Le there's a lot level more four, coming. Level 4 Meld is amazing for Rubik to steal, and of course Radiant Refraction is also good. I would say Meld is possibly even better though. Radiant that minus armor and the range, because Rubik has a full range Meld, as opposed to the short range Meld. Uh, these towers are just too easy to bring down. Dying With the tracks on Kura, they see everything in Chuan. Well, he was alive. Yeah, he got deleted, and with the Aegis, Artis is just playing brave, brave here, and he knows I can force the issue. Well, he's getting rotations to come. Like, that's probably even the bigger thing, because now you just see S4, has a little bit more fun on top lane. He's almost got a Scythe of Vice straight up. Straight up. He's 200 gold away from Scythe. Oh, yeah. So you've got his disable. That's a very popular build as well among some safe lane queens, just rushing into the hex like this. I know that a lot of the Chinese teams have done this in the past, uh, and it is super effective. So 1845, he's gonna have a scythe of vice. That is crazy fast. There it is. Like a pre-20 minute hex is just insane. And even Cora. Pipe? Yeah, he actually buys a full pipe. He has a pipe. Like, I haven't even seen a pipe in a long time, but that's a great counter to the Zeus lineup here. And could also be really good against the Winter Wyvern's uh, Splinter Blast in the team fights. Ferrari actually bought a full Solar Crest. Doesn't complete his own BKB and just goes into a Solar Crest. He goes for the Rush now on S4. S4 gonna blink. Wow, that's a lot of damage on him. He's gonna be careful with that. But the Undying Tombstone makes it very difficult for anyone else from IG to chase down. And in fact, he doesn't even kill the Tombstone. He has to move over to help out against Zai. But Zai getting Soul Ripped. He's still got oh, 10 stick yeah. charges. Now the Soul, the, the, the Shallow Grave keeping him alive. S4 oh, and his Scream being stolen only. But our team. The man in the front lines can't kill Burning. The Cold Embrace keeping him alive. Now they've gone through the Undying, but Arteezy, Silver the Aegis Immortal, wanting to force the issue, going through Chuan, getting a double kill before the Aegis will finally pop. And now they move over to Luo. Puppy and S4 chasing him down. Mana. Puppy is just so low. They get the track kill at the end of the day as well. A triple kill for Arteezy. Yeah, as he kills off the Bloodseeker there in the end. So much gold. 3,000 gold. They only lose the Undying. In all that fight, Secret just playing it. 
I, I want to say perfectly, it was just very nice execution. The only one who died was um, the Undying who died to Rubik walking all the way in with this cream of pain and killing him. The only way you could do it is sacrifice yourself. Oh, it was hard commitment. He actually didn't even die. He walked back after he did it. <laughs> he just got away with it. We're actually at a position of the game where none of the tier 1 talents of Secret are below 50%. Yeah. They have been so unpressured in this game. I'm not sure if it's just their proactive moves and how they are actually on top of things before they happen, or if IG have just been playing a little bit laid back and their weird laning didn't work out that well. Because it feels like IG haven't been up too much in this game. No. It's... <laughs> it's the RTZ move. I, I still find it hilarious that this guy just died solo to Ferrari. And now... <laughs> And now there's just nothing. Oh, you, you can't tell at all. Like, it looks like he has been stomping the entire game. When you look at his money, yep. look at his item progression, and his levels. He's level 16 at 21 minutes. So... Yeah. You get three kills in 160 CS in the space of 21 minutes. A lot of those being ancient creeps as well. Yeah. That should be kept in mind. It's probably at least some 25 or even more ancient creeps. Uh, look at the confidence from Arteezy. Uh, he bought Crystalus. Yeah. So it's full damage output from the Templar Assassin and a level 16 TA. I mean, they have pipe, so going straight into the Daedalus huh? here, I, I would have done the same in this case, because BKB, when you're stomping, it still doesn't protect you from Rupture, still doesn't protect you from the Winter Curse. So, I mean, damage is the way to go. And if they actually didn't ward up the, uh, the Ancients, he would have an easy way to get that extra thousand gold to finish up the full Daedalus. Yeah, I have a... I have a feeling that Kuroki might be finding some track kills for him soon. Maybe. Well, they find Faith. He's trying to kill off the trap, but he's not fast enough to do so. Oh, Luo with an input, and they just jump up. Faith hit once, and the Shuri toss from Kuro finishes the job. Now they can move over to Luo. A new track over on him. And with the Tombstone behind them, they've got a lot of cover fire available. s is also waiting for that perfect Sonic Wave moment. Very disciplined there to just kill that guy and then get out. A lot of people would have gone for Zeus as well, but that would have been a terrible mistake as the Winter Wyvern would have been able to Winter's Curse there. It's also because Puppy's not even there. Like, yeah. Puppy right now is trying to find a little bit more farm and levels on the top lane. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, they realized that, you know, we could get a quick pick off, but then our resources are used. We used up the Shuritas, we should just back out. Yep. And, uh,. Should also nice. flag to the fact that Roshan could be up within the space of 10, 20 seconds. So, with this. You don't really want to commit yourself too heavily into any kind of engagement and run the risk of giving IG a way back. Yeah, no reason. No reason for that. Well, there's a solar crest now up for Puppy. And the weave onto Chuan as well as Ferrari. Man, full the solar crest. <laughs> that is dangerous. And he also uses the aggressive weave all the time, putting them at so much minus Radiant's armor over on the side of Radiant. So, you think Radiant's that TA already hits hard, just imagine with the weave as well. This is... even the zombies from Tombstone will deal a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Chuan, trying to move up, they trigger the drum charge, IG. Ah, they went in, they took the Tombstone, and uh, probably gonna prompt Secret to play a little bit defensively till they have it. But Secret really only just want the tower, like, <laughs> yeah. and, and that, that Daedalus is now being bought, like, that Demon Edge, the courier's coming out for him, but at the same time, IG, they're out, they pop instantly, Puppy, he couldn't get much off, in fact, they even stole the weave over on the Rubik while oh, Zai out well. walking, yeah. he, he mechs, and into the trees, he's very visible, do they have a stun, they have faith with Telegnesis, so they've just got the damage out for to find the kill. Yep, they got a lot there. The creep wave was still cut by uh, by Secret, but still, they can just push the tier 1 tower. Yeah, no backdoor regeneration on the tier 1 tower. I think uh, they Secret still want to fight that, though. Arteezy is going to make his way up there and try to fight because they're such cool could trade if they wanted, they could just run the mid. Mm. Yeah, true. Now, that tier 1's lost anyway. He's the just taking their ancients. The fortification buys some time. Like, you lose the tier 1 tower, you lost a couple of heroes, just count your losses. Five, here, five players are up on top of IG. So you're fine with that. Yeah, Kuroki's gonna snipe the courier. They saw it fly there with the uh, side traps. He's gonna try for it. No, he's not. He wants to move in there, but he would be visible doing it. Yeah, getting out would be pretty rough. Uh, Roshan's alive as well now. So this could get scouted out pretty pretty soon. IG do have an observer ward around here, so they'll realize when, uh, when Secret move in for it. Yeah, they should really throw down a trap as well, so they see instantly when it's up. Mm. Want to kill Roshan as quickly as possible when it respawns, so you can use the Aegis as mu many times as possible. Arteezy's uh, uh, too busy, like, focusing killing people. <laughs> uh, now, now you actually see the ping coming out from Zeus of 
Oh, it's, not even, it's not even from Secret, but they're chasing down after Koro. The Dust and Sentry Ward both being used, but Koro, too far away. Uh, yes. They still yeah. see him, though. He's running back in. He's a cheeky little bastard. He's got life worth. Yeah, that's an ulti from Wyvern. In for living? the Bloodseeker. He is oh. toast. Uh, Rubik gets the cash. Yeah, they're just sneaking he actually, around. He still track. Look at S4. He was like, yeah, can I stay here? <laughs> Do you get angry if I get this close? And again, like, I think Artesia has farmed the Radiant Ancients more than he farmed the Dire Ancients by this point. He's just kind of liking these creeps. Why doesn't he just jump in and take Roshan by himself? He's got more than enough damage to do so. He hasn't thought about it. <laughs> like, just, like, trigger your, trigger your bottle charges or your one, just do it. Just do it! <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's the trap. Yeah. Gonna kill the ancients and then go there. I think. I know. Let so. them respawn again. Wait, hang on. Are we selling and buying and selling solar crests? Yeah. What actually happened there? Uh, okay. He bought a solar crest and then oh, he was he was just he was disassembling. Oh, I see. Uh, he was looking for the heavens halberd. <laughs> I see. So that's why the solar crest was up so early. Now Arteezy will go in and try Roshan, but because track was stolen by Rubik, he sees Kuro. That halberd is really big. Like, there's no BKB on the TA, so he could actually stop her. At the same time, though. They have to rush in, though. They might stop her, but Roshan, they can't stop that. Look at the solar crest over on Roshan. They'll start the fight. The tombstone up on the higher ground, but Arteezy already with that Aegis the model attacking in a building of a sonic wave! Hitting so hard, even with the sideways build damage. Arteezy chases up. They want the gyro. Now they can move over to Ferrari. Even if Kuro has been picked up by the already dead Rubik, this is a slaughter for Secret. I would 17 not, to 8. I would not be surprised to see a GG call, honestly. That, that felt like now we have to win this fight. We have to go in and turn it. But S4 has been like perfect positioning every damn fight. His ultis are just amazing. I, and Kuroki, you have to give credit for the vision that he puts into that as well. Because he keeps just tracking people up. Like the only breathing room that IG kind of felt like they had was when they took the two hero kills and went for the top tier one tower. That was the only time when I felt like IG had some control of this game. Uh, at all of the points. There was no controlling secret in this game, Toby. There was definitely not. There was no controlling this Templar Assassin once. <laughs> just get the death out of the way and then all hell just breaks loose after that. Yeah, it's working really well for every team. And the guest getting more tracks, and there's a jump in faith. The ghost after will keep him alive. Arteezy still has the Aegis of the Immortal. We have to bear this line of pack. Bounty Hunter, he gets the bounce through, and he just keeps the track up. There's three heroes who are tracked right now, and S4 back into the fray. S4 being controlled for the moment, but Luo so low. Here comes Arteezy with the old Aldi. Arteezy, there's your Aegis plop popping. Finally, but S4 still standing his ground. He's gonna kill off Chuan. Arteezy back oh, to the the side of that's easy! Just man of man oh, takes out the IG dream. by himself! Are you kidding? <laughs> that perfect lineup. <laughs> and now he buys a Monkey King bar to toast his victory! I'm feeling pretty good about this, Toby. I'm pretty happy with this. Oh, you could see it coming too, like S4. Yep. When they did, they lined up. It was a, it was a line. Oh god. Like, it's the one game. Like it's a temple. You go up against Templar Assassin. Do not conga line. You wonder how IG feel right at the moment when they realize that he's respawning and they're like, "How we're standing? Oh, oh yes." Oh yes. <laughs> Someone's taking the courier. Dear we have a God, Toby. We have a Lotus Orb over on Zai, a full Monkey King bar over on RTZ. Because all, all his kills were tractors. Look at Kuro! This guy's got almost 6k gold! Yep. Buy Divine Kuro. Let's do it. Pipe Divine. Puppy bought a straight glimmer. <laughs> Puppy is rich. All of them are rich. Like, what? what is even the gold advantage at this point? Looking over to it. Man, oh, Donald Trump God. got nothing on these guys. Yeah, that's what pays insane. off. Agative Scepter now purchased by the Co-op, and still got 3,000 gold after doing so. Yeah, this, I mean, Lotus Orb on dying, Mech, Mana Boots, <laughs> and Glimmer Cave, that's just disgusting. Is Koro buying a Hex? Uh, I think so. It's an ultimate orb over on the over Maybe on Lincoln, Korea. maybe Hex. He could rupture the uh, Bloodseeker if he's he got, plays He's more. got 3,900 <laughs> gold. The Undying could uh, rupture a Bloodseeker if he times it correctly. That would be a fun thing to see. Oh, you have a lot of movement speed. Let's see you ruptured. 
Uh, the Soul Boost is he heading back to base. That one belongs to S4. Yeah. This game is all but over right now. Like, yeah. There, there has to be some desperation move by IG. Maybe if they smoke around, get behind the enemy lines and try to do some five man action. But at this point, looking over to the net worth of heroes. It's 23,000 on TA. He yeah. just fought a full BKB. It was a Lincoln's for the bounty hunter. And the Soul Booster is casually flying out to S4. I mean, he just bought the MKB and then he bought a BKB as well, all within three minutes. So, yeah, they definitely had some bank this stashed is, up. This is it for IG. Like, it's all or nothing. Yep. And they're trying to take this fight outside the base. So they're buffing up Luo and hoping they can pop someone. Yeah, you should always buff him up before he does his ulti on Zeus. Very important. Even though it doesn't buff the full damage, it's still... It's running out, but you just saw Ferrari do it and jump in. Now, S4 on the front lines. Ferrari hexed up. What do we get? Solo only scream. S4, the Blood Rage in a really good position, but with a Sonic Wave, the Zoot only doesn't do enough. They've lost three. They're just trapped in the tree line. Ah, Teezy just won his down Chuan, and that is game. They cannot win. GG, Team Secret, with over a 35,000 net worth advantage. And the most convincing win that we've seen so far, including wildcard matches. Very true. This is that, a very, that was, very tough game for IG. That was a crushing. That was an absolute crushing by Secret on IG. We're going to have ourselves a break. Right we'll back. come back and compose our thoughts, as IG will also do the same. That's their first game of TI. Welcome to the International.